Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My peace be upon us. First of all, allow me to convey my gratitude to Dr. Muhammad Al Nizami, founder chairman, managing director of Smart Visions, for inviting me today at this important event. It is an honor for me to join with prominent speakers to share experiences and knowledge, especially on the opportunities and challenges in recovering our economy post-COVID-19 pandemic. Let me start with highlighting my perspective of Indonesia and Egypt economic performance during the COVID-19 pandemic. In the first quarter of 2021, Indonesia's economic growth has shown better turning point. The economic growth improved from minus 0 0.42 in the fourth quarters of 2020 to minus 0, 0 0.1 in the first quarter 2021. And Indonesia's trade balance for January, February 2021 recorded a surplus of 3.97 billion US dollars. Indonesia economic growth in 2021 is expected by 4.5% until 5.3% following recessions minus 2.7 in 2020. Meanwhile, as the speakers before me confirm, that I totally share their perspective, that in 2020, during the pandemic, Egypt is the only country in this region positive, positive GDP growth of 3.6%. Ladies and gentlemen, this data reflect that our two countries, Indonesia and Egypt, share more opportunities to expand and to strengthen our economic cooperation, especially on investment and trade, despite that both of us are still confronting the COVID-19 pandemic. Egypt is one of the main non-traditional leading trading partners for Indonesia in the Middle East and North Africa regions. Based on the latest data from the Indonesian Central Statistic Agency, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, in 2020, Indonesia and Egypt were able to maintain positive growth in volume of trade exchange, which reached 1,184,918 US dollars US dollars, up 3.2% from 1.148 billion compared to 2019. The trade exchange between the two countries in the first month of 2020 on January also saw very encouraging results and reached US dollars 159.49 million US dollars, an increase of 61.31% compared to the January 2020, which only reached about US dollars, 98.87 million US dollars. The top product of Indonesia's export to Egypt, such as palm oil, coffee, yarn, yarn, tires, sauces and preparations, refrigerators and freezers, desiccated coconuts, car vehicles, paper, medium density fireboard, cocoa powder, tissue, and electrical machines. On the other hand, Egypt leading export products to Indonesia are phosphate, dates, olive oil, orange, citrus, and grapes. <coughs> there are still plenty of commodities and products that Egypt can offer to Indonesia. On investment sector, according to the data, of relevant authority in Egypt. Indonesia ranked 55th in the list of countries investing in Egypt market, 
with project with total amount 1011 million US dollars Indonesia investment are concentrated on 22 projects in the field of industry constructions services communications and information technology on the other hand Indonesia is a big market for Egyptian investors. According to relevant authorities in Indonesia, Egypt investment in Indonesia for the period 2013 up to 2019 was reached about 5.23 million only in the 67 project. But in 2020, the Egypt investment realization in Indonesia has reached about 364.9 million US dollars in 30, 31 projects. Of course, there are some joint ventures also between Indonesian companies and their Egyptian partner operating in Egypt that produce glassware and food. These products not only meet the Egypt domestic market, but also supplies to neighboring countries, including to Europe. An Egyptian and Indonesian company are also recently partnering on coffee productions located in Sumatra, Indonesia. Their products are exported to Egypt, Middle East, and North Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, both countries continue to work together to increase bilateral trade. Indonesia and Egypt are on the final stage to complete the draft Memorandum of Understanding on establishment of Joint Trade Committee. Our sincere hope that this MOU will be signed in the near future, inshallah. The objectives of this committee is, among others, to develop the existing economic relation and create, create favorable conditions for sustainable development and diversifications of bilateral trade. The committee also will assist you all the private sectors, as well as small medium enterprises of both countries to establish trade and business ventures. Egypt, as my speakers before me stated, play a strategic positions in the regions. It has a number of free trade agreements with Europe, Middle East and Africa. Such positions also open more opportunities for Indonesian product to enter these regions. On the other hand, Indonesia, which has a population of more than 270 million people, is also the largest and the biggest economy in ASEAN, is very potential market for Egyptians leading export products. As for the investor sector, Egypt has tremendous potential to become a production base and for increasing value added of Indonesian products for export to Europe, Middle East, and Africa. For this reason, Indonesian Embassy in Cairo, my teams, continue to work hard to encourage Indonesian state-owned companies and private sectors to enter Egyptian market and establish projects in Egypt to take advantage and utilize the Egypt's economical strength. Despite that we are still confronting ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the Indonesian Embassy in Cairo continue to work even harder to meet our commitment to increase Indonesia Egypt trade and investment cooperation. We hold series of virtual meetings to introduce the potential market of our two countries, Indonesia and Egypt, and bring the entrepreneurs closer to each other. It is my sincere hope that through the discussions during this event, we could pinpoint our economic potential projects, and of course, including in health sectors, taking into account that the world we live now experience economic and health sectors as the two sides of the same coin, because we are encountering, we are still facing the COVID pandemic that we don't know where is it going to be going away. It is therefore our immediate challenges now is to overcome entirely 
the COVID pandemic. This is a global problem with the global solutions. We cannot have one left behind in fighting this pandemic because if we still have part of the world are suffering from this pandemic COVID, this will affect the entire world like what we are experiencing now. Is experiencing now. So for that reason, let's working together, let's recover together and progress together. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of my final statements, I would like to say it is my strong confidence that through collaborative efforts among stakeholders of Indonesia and Egypt, we could thrive and optimize all opportunity in facing the challenges of COVID-19 pandemic and our cooperation post-pandemic can even develop, develop, develop stronger as we have proven during the difficult time. Let us continue to work hand in hand for the progress and the prosperity for our beloved countries, Egypt and Indonesia. Shukran, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.